good good so so that's why i, I said that um, he he put up a disclaimer in upfront that uh, immunotherapy uh, we shouldn't be discussing cost and believe me none of my uh, uh, slides contains the cost but at the end of the day it's always the cost that comes to the mind and still we will be debate academic grounds as why i wouldn't use immunotherapies first line in pdl1 negative advanced non small cell lung cancer let's stick to the topic and let's stick to the academic discussion for for him and we be defending our case and at the end of the day uh, i believe 99% of aditya's patient and 99% of my patients were, won't be going for the ios in the first line in pdl1 negative patients and clc so next slide please 2021 has he has categorically said that yes uh, we we have uh, seen a lot of paradigm shift and that's why it is very 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 important that we underline an important fact that uh, the therapy should be a targeted therapy rather than a non targeted therapy the pdl1 has stood a test of time in numerous trials as a very important biomarker and that's why when it is negative we should respect it we should obey it and we should uh follow it very sincerely we should be looking for other biomarkers like the egfr the rare mutations the alk the ros the braf v600 the ntrk the ret the met the her2 new next slide please and so on and so forth you can see there is whole uh, gamut of mutations be the ntrk be the her2 new be the egfr for exon 20 and these all are mutations in found in the pdl1 negative subgroup so again we have 50% of our patients with advanced non small cell lung cancer who have an fda approved agent or are on a clinical trial where we can hit other than the immunotherapies for them next slide please all of us know that the pdl1 therapy benefits only in minority of the cancer patients majority of our cancer patients don't benefit for the minority of the uh, the pdl1 therapy next slide please and it has stood a various uh, time that pdl1 has shown its results next slide please there are surrogate markers for it but yes pdl1 is there and when we look at the the benefit of it we can see that's only a subset of patients the 5 year os is in terms of a single figure when we look at the advanced non small cell lung cancer treated with pembrolizumab in a pdl1 negative subgroup so no benefit of adding therapy in where where the driving mutation is negative next slide please also the pembro was specific whenever the tumor mutation burden is less than 175 no benefit next slide please i would be rushing through my slides a lot fast so please keep on patching it up the checkmate 227 trial where the 3 year update was there in fact when you add io plus the chemo it is uh, rather derogatory to add it especially pdl1 negative sub and similarly next slide when the keynote 598 a very ambitious project where two companies mutually came together with pembro and io and found out there was no benefit of adding io io combinations in whole the ct scape again uh, if we look at an ambitious uh, io io design uh, the tigrol map uh, where the pdl1 negative subgroup was there in fact the io io combination had single digit response rates and the tps and next slide please next next i suppose next please so when we compare the overall survival of next uh, the pdl1 negative subgroup again you can find out uh, it it doesn't hold the test of time in the pfs uh, also next slide please when you look at the checkmate trial where the nevo plus ep combination was there again you look at the pdl1 negative subgroup the hazard ratio crossing unity no benefit of there and when we look at if there is a target and we give immunotherapy the immuno target think the association between pdl1 and the response to immunotherapy again most of them have a progressive disease as could be seen again in the egfr mutant subgroup again uh, you could see next slide please next slide and next slide and again those patients where uh, you have a potential genomic marker especially the stk1 the 
uh, status again uh, you could see the the hazard ratios crossing unity and that's where uh, uh, i believe uh, the immunotherapy should be hold background as these are the most common mutations that can be seen in in pdl1 negative subgroup again you have a pioneer biomarker program next slide please next next and next next where more than 400 biomarkers have been planned and they have closely been uh, looked up upon and there you can see that pdl1 does play an important role in the surrogacy of the markers for it next slide please and the P the higher the pdl1 score the higher the responses the lower the pdl1 score the poorer the responses mm -hmm. has been similarly seen in, in these patients. And that's why it is very important that we look PDL1, we respect PDL1 as a marker, and that's why we are doing this as in those which are PDL1 negative, we should find out the alternative uh, for it. And now comes the major, major effect that we'll be going to discuss is the immune related toxins. Next slide, next, and next, and next. Next, you are running very slowly. Next slide, please. So immune-related toxins can affect any organ of our body. It be from head to toe. I can see you, the slides are clouded with it. The immune-related toxins are, if we combine the CTLA-4 and the PD-1, they, they are going to be uh, at any point of time. And you could see those clubbing of graphs together. And when you look at the combination of them, so... When we give anti-CTLA-4 alone, 40% of our patients do have skin toxicities. When you give anti pdl one alone, 34% of our patients do have skin toxicities. Combination gives 65% of them the skin toxicities. Again, the management of skin toxicities is a huge task. Next slide, next slide, next slide. You look at the hyperthyroid status of the patients. Anti-CTLA-4 again has a 1 to 5% NTPDL1 has 5 to 10% and combination is an incremental effect of 20% of having those side effects. Again, uh, the management of hypophysitis, again, NTCTLA4, 1%, NTPDL1, it's rare, but the combination has an 8% effects. The hepatitis, next, next slides. NTCTLA4 has 5 to 10%, NTPDL1 has 5 to 10%, the combination has 25 to 30%. Colitis, again, NTCTLA4 has 54%, NTPL1 has 21%, and combination has 56%. Again, uh, won't be discussing those management, but it, it is a huge task to manage these situations um, in a routine clinical practice. The ICPI-related uh, toxins of pneumonitis, again, combination has a 7 to 10% of it. And when we look at the other toxins, it is huge. You have to involve every possible department, the ophthalmology, the neurology, the cardiology, the nephrology. So I rest my case here that uh, giving PDA1 and the checkpoint inhibitors is not a simple task. It should be reserved in a specialized population to a specialized a marker. And where the marker is negative, we should be respecting that marker and should be giving a marker-driven therapy rather than a non-specific given therapy. Uh, thank you for listening and uh, over to the moderator.